15-17, City of Valdosta. Yes, sir. This is text amendments to the LDR, the Land Development Regulations. Um, as proposed by the City of Valdosta, they're broken into just two groups of amendments on three pages, which are there in your packet. Um, one is a very minor change to the definition of the billboard. Um, the other one has to do with structural drawings in terms of threshold by at which point uh, we require engineer drawings by a certified engineer. Um, a comparison of that with other local governments is there on the last page of the packet. Um, the third one has to do with wall signs in the downtown commercial zoning district, make that more consistent with other commercial zoning districts in the city. And then the fourth one is the sunset date, and this is really the big one of the amendments. You may recall from three and two years ago, um, the city relaxed its regulations for temporary signage. By that, I mean portable signs and banners to allow those with a permit but for long periods of time. Um, the current sunset date of that is December 31st of 2015. That's coming up pretty soon. So hence, we're having to at least address that. Uh, the proposal here is to push that back another two more years. The rationale for doing that in the first place five uh, years ago was because of the downturn in the economy um, and requests from the business community. Um, when we looked at this three years ago, things had not really changed, so we extended it by three years in hopes that it would. Things still have not changed quite a lot. Um, so staff, <coughs> two more years, that gets us beyond the next federal election cycle. Um, in maybe two years, things will start changing and we can readdress it. One thing staff has made a note is we will uh, keep a careful inventory of those that have gotten a permit versus those that have not and the numbers they are with. Um, and so come two years from now, we'll have some pretty good information for you, some good comparisons. Any questions for staff on this request? Commissioner Dalton? Your, your statement that things have not changed a lot, by what metrics are you using? Just general perception of the economy, um, our own permitting activity, development activity, um, has remained fairly constant at a lower level than what we were seeing more than five years ago. There's been hints of it getting better, and then it'll slow down, and so it's not flat, but it is not back like it was. Um, it's initially staff was not happy with extending this two more years. We had never fully liked having this provision, um, but we understood the rationale behind it. Um, but quite honestly, we do not have very good numbers to defend getting rid of it completely. Um, I would like to at least see what those numbers turn out to be. This is really an enforcement nightmare for staff. A lot of these temporary signs um, are there without permits. One of the difficulties is keeping track of which ones have permits, which ones do not. The ones that don't have permits get dealt with. They go away temporarily. And we find that they almost always come back. Um, which is one reason why it becomes a difficult. Ms. Yes, ma'am. I have two questions or comments. I mentioned that to you, Matt, during the board session, but under the section 23-5 permit requirements, item 10, C, letter I, the yes. since you are doing these changes, the building codes, it should be with the Georgia building codes and amendments, instead of what's shown there. <coughs> On the second page, um, signs in the CD zoning district, is that specifically for the downtown area? That is in the downtown commercial zoning area, which is the core of downtown. It's not synonymous with the CBDA, okay. or certainly not even the historic district, but it is the basically the historic downtown storefront area. I think I, I have a problem with that, adding that as a freestanding sign to be right and adapt specifically in historic downtown uh, where it is main street storefronts mm -hmm. um, and i believe that these cases should be one by one and they should go through still through the conditional use um, process right. because i think by allowing by right freestanding sign per business that goes against the design guidelines that 
govern that historic, specifically historic area. Right. Um, so we have, it's a conflict of... Right. And I share your thought line, um, and I took a few steps further. Um, one is why it's written, the design guidelines are still applicable. It's still in the local historic district. It's subject to all of that. Um, if you look at 7B, the last sentence, the such sign shall be located on private property, set back at least five feet from all property lines, and at least 10 feet from any building on that parcel. So currently, and I had to go look at this myself, we do have some properties in the CD zone um, where the building is not up on the sidewalk like the typical storefront. Two examples of that are First Presbyterian Church and the Converse Dalton House where the building is set back. If they, and they both currently have a freestanding sign, a small, tasteful, professional office sign, which is what we're proposing here. If they were not allowed to have that, they would, and if it were a business, you would have to have a sign on the wall, and you're back off of the sidewalk and the streetscape, so it puts you at somewhat of a disadvantage. So staff's thinking was, in those cases, they might be allowed to have a modest freestanding sign up front as approved by HPC, subject to design guidelines. I put in those distances so that buildings that are not set back away from the sidewalk would not be compliant with this. In other words, there's too little space between the building. And in those, they should have a wall sign like everyone else. But for those buildings that are set back more than 10 feet, and plus the width of the sign, they would be eligible. <clears throat> like Converse Dalton, for example, which has about a 15 square foot sign. They're a dozen or more feet back from the road, which is about 25 feet. Otherwise, most every other building in CD, the buildings up there, they're not eligible under this paragraph. I did think about that part of it. I had the same concerns. The only thing I wrestled with was the size. 16. Um, before the LDR came along, uh, we allowed them at 12 square feet. And so I debated whether to go back to 12, and that's when I started looking at the other signs that are out there. Um, part of it has to do with how this massing of the sign compares with the massing of the building, mm -hmm. and things like that's when the design got taken. Any other questions for staff, please? If you more questions. Simply, is anyone here wishing to speak in favor of this request? Come forward. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Anyone here wishing to speak in opposition to this request? Please come forward. There being none, commissioners, any further discussion on this item? Okay. Sir? Just, just I, I think we ought to seriously consider the extension of the portable signage deadline. I mean, the, th this is not going to get any better. The people who have portable signs are always going to want portable signs, no matter the economy. Talking about the 2017 deadline for right. closing? They junk up the city, it's hard to enforce. I don't see any reason to extend this deadline. And I hope we can break these up where the others don't get caught up in that. But my personal opinion is that. And I'll make a motion accordingly. Um, I mean, you can. I mean, there are five groups. There's B and C. I mean, C is portable signs under C, which is part one. And then number two has to do with banners. But that, that is certainly in the realm of possibility. It's recommended extending it for one, but not the other. Um, we would need to reword the paragraph for one that we don't extend. Otherwise, if we do, it's just by changing the date. But we would have to revert the language back to the way it was five years ago if we don't extend it. Commissioner Fulton, you're talking about strictly C1. C1, horrible sign. Strictly that, strictly that line. Mm -hmm. And I don't have the prior existing language with me this evening. Um, but it could be worded the way it was before 2015. So you just want to revert back to that? Which is the way it was. I don't know what the language You had to okay. allow them to change it. December 31st, 2015. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's if I remember, it was for one month, and then you had to wait 
three months before you could get another one. It's still by permit. It was just a temporary period of time. I may be confusing that with the provisions for banners. They might be the same. It's been so long, quite honestly, I don't remember. I know 15 years ago, it was a lot different. I mean, because if we left it 2000, December 31st, 2015, then they would just have to be brought into compliance with sign regulations under subparagraph F. They would, it's just we would need to spell out what those regulations are, hence the change in of that first paragraph. I see. Well, it may not pass. <laughs> but, but, I, <laughs> but I move we recommend uh, approval of all except um, section 230-9E1 under portable signs and recommend denial of that particular section. To the city council. And refer that back to language pre 2010. Correct. Are you okay with that? I am. I have one more suggestion along with Commissioner Gladwin on that first page. The reference to SVCCI needs to be changed since SVCCI no longer exists as that. <coughs> and just simply read with the International Building Code with the adopted Georgia <coughs> amendments, which is what we operate on. Okay, so we have a motion for Commissioner Folsom and an addition to that by staff member Matt Martin. Some additional language. Which Commissioner Folsom accepts gladly to put on his motion. Do we have a second? We got a second, Commissioner Walls. All in favor of this request, please signify by raising your right hand. 8-0 unanimous, Mr. Okay, now we got just a few.